Everybody, DM Gaming here, y'all, with the DM Gaming Show. Happy to be here today. Yes, I am. Man, it's I'm 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 kind of floored right now. Um, it's one of those things, y'all. What I'm about to talk about today is, of course, violence in video games, okay? Um, violence in video games, you have the president, uh, Donald Trump, now making comments and remarks in the sense that um, saying that violence in video games is, is, is part of the reason violence runs rampant in our nation with the youth. Now, Anybody who plays games will tell you that is a load of, of crap. That's what it is. Um, I've been playing video games since Nintendo. I've even played Atari. You know, my grandma had an Atari, so I would play the Nintendo at our house. And whenever we went over our grandma's house, we'd, we'd dig up the Atari, hook it up, play it. I've been playing video games since video games have been out. And y'all, I've played some very violent video games. I've played some not so violent video games. I've played the worst of them all in Grand Theft Auto, in my opinion, as far as violence go. And I've never thought about causing harm to anybody in that regard. I have kids, and with my son, you know, I was a little cautious at first about him playing games like Assassin's Creed, and what I won't let him play Grand Theft Auto, not right now. And the reason why is because not because of the violence, but because of some of the other stuff that's in it. He watches me play it, but when I play it, I don't go and pick up hookers and do drugs and stuff like that. But man. To say that if if violence in video games is a reason, then you have to also count violence in cartoons, violence in movies, violence in TV shows. Like, that stuff doesn't make people go out and do those things. And the reason I'm bringing this up to talk about this today is because it concerns me because I feel like if... I feel like if 
they start saying that, that soon we'll start seeing regulations on our video game. And it's also one of those things where, I mean, we already have the rating system in place. I mean, could they revamp it? You know, because right now to buy a mature a mature game, you have to be, I want to say either 16 or 17 years and older to buy a rated mature game. Or is it 18? Because they also have adult games. Yeah, I think it's 18 for the mature and to buy a, an adult rated game, which I, I've never seen a game rated A for adult, but they have that rating available. To buy that game, you have to be 21 or over. So could we see them start trying to change that? Because let's be real. When you're 18 years old, you know, you're not a child. You know, it, it, you're just not. You're not a child. But even more so when you're 21. So could we see games like Grand Theft Auto and a lot of these other M-rated games be rated A for adult. And 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 if they do that, what type of things are we going to start seeing in these games? Because y'all know I used to work at GameStop. And I would see little seven, eight-year-old kids come in all the time trying to buy Grand Theft Auto. And and we can't legally sell it to them. Like, I mean, it's to the extent of selling cigarettes to a minor. Like, it's that serious. And... The issue with it is, is that they would, you know, come in with their parents and their mom or they, their parents would come in by themselves sometimes and say, I'm looking for a game. OK, cool. What game are you looking for? I'm looking for GTA five. And I always have to ask them because it's our job to because I don't want to give a parent something and they don't know what it is. And then they come back and take it out on us. So we always ask them, um, is, are, are you aware of what that game contains? The majority of the time, the parents aren't aware of what that game contains. And then, and then sometimes they do. They're like, oh, yeah, I know. And the guy's like literally seven years old. Like, why would you buy a Grand Theft Auto for your seven-year-old child? And I'm not saying it because it's going to make them grow up and go out and try to cause violence to other people. But there's just certain things you don't expose kids to. You see what I'm saying? But yet, people are like that. The problem isn't the children. The problem is the parents, in my opinion. You know. In my opinion. You have to include the parents in this too. But this this generation that we have, the, who's leading this country, they, they love to point the finger. And now you're pointing it at video games? Really? Like, to me, that's sad. That is, that is preposterous. It is blasphemous. To try and blame video games for violence. Now, you have some retards out there. And I ain't saying that as an as insult to anybody who has a mental disability. I'm saying it in the, in a sense of it's idiotic. That literally goes out and does stuff because they see it in Grand Theft Auto. They see it in the video game and see it on TV. Parents, you need to sit your children down and tell them this is just a video game. And that's what I did with my son before he, before I let him play Assassin's Creed. Like, listen, this is just a game. Don't go out trying to do this stuff in the real world because you will either get yourself killed, kill someone else, end up in jail. Or, or I'll end up in trouble. And if I'm in trouble, it's going to be some trouble. You dig what I'm saying? So you, you have to educate. You have to let them know that. I mean... I don't I don't get it why kids or people in general because let's not let's be real about it there are some adults who don't get it as well there are some adults who don't get it as well y'all and it's sad it's sickening it, it doesn't make sense it's 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 insane man but to say that this is what causes this It's just insane. It's insane. But what are we going to do about it? What are, what, are, what are you going to do about it? What are we as the gaming industry going to do about it? Because, y'all, you know, as the PlayStation and Xbox One dropped, and PlayStation 4 and Xbox One dropped, 
you see it more and more and more that there are less and less and less and fewer games that are actually good for kids. Sports titles, you're going to have those. I mean, but when you get into game games, it's tough. And 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 y'all, part of the reason is because the gener the, these gaming consoles are trying to keep up with the generation that got into gaming, which is our generation, my generation. You know, that's why you see more M rated games now because a lot of people who are playing games right now are adults because we are the ones who started playing games as kids. But you do have some rated E games. You have some rated T games. But y'all, they're boring, man. In my opinion, there's not a lot of games that are that, that a 12-year-old would, would enjoy playing. You get what I'm saying? And maybe it's just my mindset because, because I, like I said, with, with me growing up in gaming and stuff, but you don't see a lot of these younger kids interested in games like Mario Kart and stuff like that. They want to play the more violent games. Assassin's Creed, they want to play that. Grand Theft Auto, they go crazy for that. When I was growing up, man, we was we was loving playing Mario. We was loving it. Mario Kart. Oh man. I think the most violent game I played as a kid was Killer Instinct in Mortal Kombat. I mean, I was in Super Metroid. I was, you know, I mean, my gosh, Pokemon. I mean, kids now, man, they want the most violent thing. But can you blame them? When all they see on television is violence. And then people say, well, if you'll do it, I guess they're they're trying to get to the point where they say, well, if you'll do it in the game, you'll do it in real life. And that's not at all true. That's not true. That fantasy is there. Living out that realism is there. But guys, I would not drive my car off a cliff and, and, and cause physical harm to people for the heck of it. That just doesn't make sense at all. I would not do that. Is it fun to do it in the game? I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it is. It's fun to to cause mayhem in the game. It's a good stress reliever. But that's why we have games. To live something that you can't live in real life. That's why I play Madden. Well, well used to. That's why I play NBA Live. That's why I play Dragon Ball Z. You know? That's why we play video games. To escape this reality. To live a fantasy world or whatever the case may be, you know? It's it's amazing. It's amazing. It is one of those things, guys, where if we're not careful, they're going to have their their hands in our games as well. And it's something that needs to seriously be considered and thought about. Seriously. No joke. Because, well, I guess you can't say they don't have their hands in it, y'all. Because when we look at things like microtransactions, those things are apparent. Those things are real. Those things exist. You know? And it's even gone to the point where people are pointing out how it's essentially gambling, which it is. It's gambling. At the end of the day, microtransactions are not all microtransactions. Things like in Madden with Ultimate Team, the card packs, it's gambling. You're spending real money for in-game currency that you don't know what you're going to get. You're taking a gamble. You see what I'm saying? And now lawmakers are starting to wake up to this and they're starting to take a look at this stuff and they're starting to say, hey, you know, that's gambling. But, you know, the same thing in games like Destiny. And in other games, you know, uh, it's. It's developing a gambling habit in children and adults. Because you got to have that perfect card or that perfect piece of armor or that perfect weapon or whatever the case may be. And you don't know what you're going to get and you're steady spending this money trying to get that one ideal item. 
It's gambling, man. There is no other way around it. But somehow it's legal and somehow they're able to do it. I think um, I was I was doing a live stream with ba- uh, Back Pocket Game Reviews uh, the other day, which it's on this channel. Go check it out. And he, we were talking about, um, I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Activision. Activision is somebody else. Y'all, they made $4 billion off of microtransactions. $4 billion in a year off microtransactions. That is insane. And you wonder why they push it. They're greedy, man. You make that much money and you can't deliver a quality game like Destiny, for instance. Why does Destiny have so many issues if Activision is pulling in billions of dollars? You would think they would have the resources to bring in the teams necessary to fix that. But I mean, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because at the end of the day, they in it for the money. They're in it for the money. They don't care about us. They don't care about what we want. It's sad, man. And another thing, y'all, and I'm, I'm going to do a video on this today for those of you who didn't catch the, 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 the morning show. About how it seems that the best thing to do when looking at a game is simply just to wait. Wait until the collector's edition come out or the ultimate edition or whatever you may want to call it. Wait till that comes out because... You know, Xenoverse 2, y'all. For those of y'all that know, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. Zen- Xenoverse 2 is coming out with their final, I-, I would assume it's their final DLC pack. And in it, you actually get to change history. Now, it- it's alarming, and I'm doing a video on that too. So you get an exclusive here on the DM Gaming Show. An exclusive into what's going to come to the channel. They advertise the game that you would be able to alter history. But when the game came out, you didn't alter anything. There was no freedom in altering uh, history like they advertised, except for one incident, and you really didn't even get to alter it. Now, with this new DLC pack coming out, you're actually, or so they claim, going to be able to change stuff to how you want it to end up, in a sense. And, And not only that, but the other stuff they're adding to the game is stuff that was advertised. And And my thing is this, you know, it's almost like they take this full concept, this full complete concept, and they say, okay, what can we give them that will make them happy enough that they will pay this money for this? And then they say, we'll take other stuff out and we'll we'll sell it later as DLC. Now, Bungie got caught with this during Destiny 1, having stuff locked, in a sense, behind the game. like. It, it was already in the game. It was on the disc, but it was locked behind a paywall, essentially. But when people found out about this, they stopped putting it on the disc. And what they would do is just put the game on the disc and whatever stuff that they took out, they would just hold it and act as though it was DLC, like they're working on it. And they may have been. I don't know. But here's the thing. When they make these games now, instead of giving you everything that they have to offer, they have a plan and they say, well, we're going to give them the base game where they say they have a plan with all of these things. They know everything that they're they plan on adding to the game. OK, but what they do is give you the base game and, and take the stuff that they wanted to add to the game and use it as DLC. Now, the publishers and developers that I love are the ones that give you the free DLC. Because there are some people who want to enjoy the full essence of the game that can't. And y'all, let's be real. In order to get the full scope of a game, you need to play it with all the DLC that's available. Otherwise, you're just playing a shell of a game. Dragon Ball Fighters just came out not too long ago. Perfect example. We knew months ago that they were planning eight. They said at least eight DLC characters. If you already know who those characters are, if you know you and you got to know, you got to know who they are because you have a number on it. OK, otherwise you wouldn't be able to put a number. Why not go ahead and make them playable characters? Why do it as DLC? Why? Because they can make more money. You see what I'm saying? It's not fair. 
used to, you used to could play through the game and unlock certain characters. Yeah, you could do that with Android 21 in the game, blase, blase. But why make it DLC? Because it's all about the money. Now, they also say that video games should cost more money than what they cost right now. That we're actually fortunate to have games be as, as cheap as they are. And, and I can kind of agree with that because I think that with the advances in technology and the demand for better stuff, things cost more. But you have another side on it that says, no, it doesn't cost more to make a game now than it did five, ten years ago. I don't know. But it it, it amazes me, y'all, that when you look at corruption in general, when you look at anything, if if it has ties to money, you can you can kind of see that there's going to be some form of corruption somewhere when it's on a large scale. Even look at YouTube, our own platform. People, it's social media. People doing so much just for views that now they're 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 eating Tide Pods, almost killing themselves, permanently injuring themselves. Jake Paul with the stuff that he did. People are doing some grotesque stuff just for views, for fame, for money. It is in. Sane it is detestable, it's deplorable. Stuff has to change, man. But to say that a video game promotes violence in an individual, I guess you could just say it's up to the individual. If you have an addictive, a very manipulative, and a follower type personality, I mean, when you're a kid, you see stuff, you go out in the yard and play. We used to watch Power Rangers. Me and my brother would go outside and play Power Rangers. We used to watch Ninja Turtles. We would go outside, play Ninja Turtles. We knew that they were shooting movies and stuff like that. We had little toy guns that we would play with. But never, ever, did it even almost cross our mind to do something like that to somebody in real life. Ever. Because we knew that those movies weren't real. That people weren't really doing those things. But somewhere along the line, somebody was like, hmm, I think that it's video game. <laughs> but you have science that proved that playing video games actually makes you a, a more cognitive person. It enhances your, 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 uh, your abilities, your thought processing, your thinking, your, your cognitive functions, your neurological functions. And in some games, y'all it literally just makes you, it helps you to escape reality, man. It's like a getaway. Soon they'll be calling it a drug. Video games are drugs. Should be regulated. <laughs> really? See, that's all this because people don't want to take fault for their actions. How are you the president of the United States and you you point fingers to everybody else? You're the one responsible. If I work in a business and I'm the owner of that business and something goes wrong in that business, they're not going to point to the employee. They're not going to want to talk to the manager. If they know you, they're going to want to talk to the owner. If they know the owner, if they're able to talk and get in contact with the owner. GameStop, perfect example. Letting go of some top executives. Paul Rain stepping down because of health issues, which bless his soul for that. We understand those things. But if something goes wrong in that company, people, who are they going to look at? If it goes wrong on a big scale, they're going to look at the executives. If, if they are not making money now, if they're, if they're having theft problems and stuff like that, yeah, they're going to look at the individuals. If they're having uh, problems selling in certain stores, they're going to look at the individuals. But if, if they're looking at their bottom dollars, their P&L, their profit and loss, they're going to look at those executives. They're going to look at where that money's coming from and say, you said that you were going to be able to do this and you didn't deliver. It's a yin-yang thing in this, in this nation, man. But it seems like one side seems to be a little bit stronger than the other. It doesn't matter. You can look at any topic where you have somebody saying one thing about it, you'll have somebody else saying a completely other thing. That's why for those of y'all who are wanting to start YouTube channels and podcasts and things like that you're going to have people that's going to have negative remarks you're going to have people that's going to say bad things 
but just as many people, or you'll probably have more people saying positive stuff about it. So this is what I tell you. Do what you want to do in your life. If you want to make music, make music. Because guess what? While somebody is not going to, somebody's not going to like it. But somebody else will. If you want to make videos, you make videos. Somebody's not going to like it. But somebody else will. Some, there will always be somebody that likes what you do. So who do you give your energy to? We are so accustomed to negativity that it seems that even top YouTubers like Geekdom One on One, y'all love Geekdom, love his content. The man is respectable. You cannot deny his ability and impact in the Dragon Ball community. It is undeniable. But the man has an ego out of this world. He does. Now, Geekdom, if you're hearing this, listen to me, man. I like your content, but your ego, your ego, it, it gets in the way. Now, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Is that stopping me because I don't like his ego because I don't like the fact that he replies and spends a lot of unnecessary energy on negative comments instead of focusing on the community and the positive comments. Does that stop me from watching this content? No, it doesn't. I still watch it. However, I don't watch it as much as I used to, you know. I watch his videos, but you know, and I follow him on Twitter, but I kind of skip over his stuff because it, it seems like there's more and more him replying about negative stuff. Man, if you got three hundred thousand followers, who cares about four or five hundred people that may have something negative to say? But we, it it affects us. It affects every last one of us. Even me with our YouTube channel, what getting close to fifteen hundred subscribers. And even I get negative comments and it affects you. It does. You would be remiss. You would you would be lying if you said it didn't affect you in some way. But now what I do, hey, man, I just hit the, the remove button. Just take that comment off. We don't need any negativity because here's the thing about it. You can be critical of someone. You can give critique to someone and advice to someone without being negative about it. And I think that's the issue. Like, I don't think people like Geekdom and myself and other big YouTubers and stuff like that have any issue with people saying how they feel. They have an issue with how people say how they feel, like trying to put you down or something to that effect, you know? And 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 then you have the fanboys in all parties who feel like the person that they're following can do no wrong. And they people loosely throw out that term hater. That really grinds my gears. Bro, I'm not a hater if I have something bad to say about what you're doing. If I say, man, you need to check your ego, that doesn't make me a hater. That's me telling you, you need to check your ego. I, I don't like how you're so full of yourself. You know, or, or, or saying, hey, man, I don't like this video. They don't make you a hater. Now, are there haters out there? Yes, they are. But to think that everybody is going to like what you do is insane. And to label anybody that doesn't like what you do as a hater is even more insane. Somebody look up the definition of a hater, man. Let's ask. Hey, Siri, let's. What's a what's a hater? I found two reminders. I don't need no reminders. Listen, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna. Hey Siri. What's a hater? Hater is a song written and recorded by American new metal band Korn. It was released as a single for the band's 11th studio album, The Paradigm Shift, World Tour Edition bonus disc. Siri don't even know what a hater is. Hater is, is it even in the dictionary? The word derives from the word hate. Meaning you hate something. Man, I, I I wish people would just stop using the word hater, man. You know, you know what I think about the word hater and the people that use it? Oh, you're just a hater. Oh, you just hating. Is they first of all don't have the vocabulary to express how they truly feel. But they also can't take the fact that somebody just doesn't like what they do. Because that's that's really what hating is. If I'm hating on you, you're doing something that I just don't like. Now, people say, no, hating is whenever somebody talks trash about you because they want to be like you. That's called jealousy and envy. When you're jealous of someone or when you're envious of someone. 
When you envy somebody, you want what they have. When you're jealous, you 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 want what they have. It's kind of the same. That's not hating. That's that's not the same thing, man. It's hate. So say that, man. You're just envious. You're just covetous, you know. But these things exist in the world that we live in, y'all. And it affects us. The reason you might say, DM, why are you talking about stuff like this? Because everything that I'm talking about affects the gaming industry. It affects the, our, 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 our YouTube. It affects our videos. It, it, and there's somebody out there right now who wants to start a YouTube, who wants to get into gaming, who wants to get into these communities and build their own communities and followings, but are afraid and nervous and shy because they don't want to deal with any negativity. But it's going to happen. You have to take pride in where you at. You have to be thankful and be grateful where you at. Like, like I said, right now we're all, we're approaching 1,500 subscribers. There's channels out there with millions. There's channels out there with hundreds of thousands of subscribers. But guess where they all started? With one. It starts with one. And, you know, I find myself from time to time looking at other channels and like, man, I wish that we could have those types of numbers on every video view and subscriber count and stuff like that. And but it's tough because you do want to be successful. But what is success to me? That is being successful. But in definition, our channel is successful because we have a healthy following of individuals, of great people. We have a great community at the DM Gaming. And DM Gaming community is awesome. So in that retrospect, we are successful. Do we want to grow? Of course we want to grow because I have a dream. My dream is to have a large channel to get a lot of views. I would love for this to be my job. The podcast, my music, everything, you know. My YouTube the podcast, radio, if I can get into radio, I have goals. These are things that I could do that I would love to do. How many people are tired of waking up, going to a job that they do not care for, that they are forced to do? Let me tell you something. If you've ever had a job where you, or if you've ever worked somewhere where you loved it, you will never, you ever hear that term? If you get a job you enjoy, you'll never work another day in your life. That is truth. When I, y'all, y'all, GameStop, people give GameStop a lot of slack, but I loved my job at GameStop. I've heard about other employees having bad experiences, but let me tell you something. If an employee has a bad experience at a particular GameStop, for instance, it's probably because of the manager. If you have a crappy manager, you're not going to have a good time at work. If you have a crappy district manager, you're not going to have a good time at work. But I was fortunate to have an awesome manager and an awesome district manager. Not to mention the people who are on my team with me. Emily, Raven, Danielle. Awesome. An awesome crew. And that made it that much more awesome. Same thing when I worked in the, in the fitness industry at Anytime Fitness. I loved it. Y'all, I would be there at 10, 8 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night every day, just grinding it out, coming in. on. It was fun. It didn't feel like work. I enjoyed every minute of it, and I wanted to grind my butt off because I loved it. It wasn't work. It wasn't work. Why do you think back in the day before people... Uh, had the option oh well, i gotta work here because i need a job people had trades if you love to make stuff with your hands you were probably a carpenter or a potter or something like that you love to do it and you can tell by the product that you made that this individual really cares and likes what they do that was your job for instance if we would live back then me doing radio or, or or podcast youtube that would be my job to provide entertainment to provide an escape for people to get out and listen to something to grow, man. How many YouTubers are trying to help the people that listen to them grow? We are. And, I, and there are others out there. Now, am I going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I don't want to grow on YouTube to make money? No, that's a lie. If that was the case, I wouldn't monetize the videos that I can monetize. Because at the end of the day, we have to make money to pay bills. We have to make money to put food on the table. You get what I'm saying? But at this point in time, YouTube isn't even almost supporting that. I work for my bills to pay my bills and stuff. You see? 
But I want to get there one day to where YouTube can be my job or or to where YouTube can open up other opportunities like with the podcast and with music and with gaming and whatever the case may be can open up those doors for me to grow and, and provide a living doing what I enjoy doing, allowing me and my family to be able to travel the United States and possibly even the world, you know. And that would then give me the platform to do exactly what I'm doing now, the same thing that I did when I had under 10 subscribers. And that's giving sound life advice. Because guess what? If you're going to listen to DM Gaming, you're going to hear some stuff about life. Some of the people on the channel, Trevor, Chris, Drew, Antonio, Alexander, the list goes on and on. The GOAT, shout out to you, man. I ain't heard from you in a while. Where you at? You know? Those people, they know me. And I can, they may say, well, DM, we really don't know you. Yeah, they know me because I don't hide anything from them. When you hear me talking on here, when you see me talking on the, on the videos and stuff, that's me. That's me. I'm not faking it. I'm not acting a certain way for views and subscribers. I'm coming to you real raw and uncut. See what I'm saying? No video game has affected that. No video game has made me violent. If anything, video games has relieved stress in my life. Y'all used to deal with anxiety and depression after my brothers passed away. A year apart from each other. Okay. Video games was my escape. My escape from thinking about when am I going to die or how I'm going to die. Or what family member is next to die. Video games was that escape. And if I was angry, hey, let me hop on a game and just go on a spree in Grand Theft Auto. Because I'm not going to do nothing like that in real life. I didn't want to. But it helps to relieve some stress. Put in a boxing game and punch somebody in the face. Play football or something. You know, something. But that was the outlet. Not physical people. Not doing things in the physical world like that. I have a passion for cars. I can't afford these cars that that are on these video games. That's why we play them. It's called a simulation. Even so much, y'all, that that the that the army and other other uh, forces in the United States government take a look at some people that play video games and use them for the battlefield. Because the battlefield is evolving into a place where you almost don't even need people actually on the ground. Those planes and drones that fly themselves, guess who's flying them? I'm pretty sure a lot of those people have had a history and background in video games. When you play in those flight simulators, they're paying attention. Because guess what? That's all it is. It's a flight simulator. If I had to... Uh, go onto some kind of simulator, a flight simulator or something like that. With me having a history in video games and simulation style games, I would do better than just the average Joe off the street. Because to me, it's just like a video game. Y'all look it up. The science is there. It is real. It is real. You could put that on a resume. I play simulation style games. They know. They know the numbers. They know the statistics. You will do better than somebody off the street that they have to train. Because basically, you've already had training through their video game. And if you don't think that they're not paying attention to those numbers, you might want to do your research, my friend. All in all, y'all, video games do so much good for so many people. You have children in the hospital sick and dying with terminal illnesses. That, that, That video games is their escape. How in the world can you point to violence and say it's because of video games? People aren't violent because of what they watch on TV or what they see in video games. People are violent because that's what's in their heart. Somebody along the line somewhere hurt them. And they can't deal with that pain. Or they wasn't taught how to um, uh, deal with that pain or, or outlets, you know, to get that stuff out of them. That's why we try to keep everything as positive as possible here, man. Even if people send a negative comment, I'll give something positive back. Not going to feed into that negative energy. 
People need to get more in touch with their energies and their frequencies and the people of people around them. Be careful what you say to people. Because you never know how can it can how it can affect that individual. I am I am not one for bullying. I've even told my kids if I ever hear you, see you, bullying or anything, oh my goodness. You're gonna be in big trouble. Do not play that stuff. Because you have children that that take their lives because of bullying. They just want a friend, man. A friend. You don't know how much being a friend to somebody can change their life and yours. It doesn't cost you anything to be a friend. And a big reward is being a friend to somebody who don't have friends who want friends, but everybody's trying to be the cool kid. So they don't want to hang out with the unpopular kid. And adults do this same stuff. Don't think it's just a kid thing. Adults do it too. I see it all the time. We got to get it together, man. We have to get it together. This has been a very serious show, y'all, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. The DM Gaming Show, y'all. I want to thank everybody for listening in today, y'all. Don't forget... To follow us on Twitter at DM Gaming 5 and that's the number 5 Not you don't have to spell it out it's actually the actual number subscribe to the YouTube channel www.dmgaming forward slash c forward slash <laughs> I said the wrong one it's www.youtube I said dmgaming.com didn't I www.dmgaming look I said it again yeah whatever www.youtube.com forward slash c forward slash dm gaming 06 you can google us we're there we'll probably be at the top actually let's see does dm gaming pop up at the top of a search engine let's let's see because that that would make us easier to find right Wow, we are we are actually at the top. No, we're not. <laughs> we close to it though. We up there. We are up there. There's there's several that are a little higher than us, but we're there. We're definitely there. Feels good to show up in a Google search, man. That's pretty cool. But I appreciate everybody for tuning in, y'all. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, if you have Spreaker, it is free. You can download the podcast and the iTunes. You can find us on SoundCloud. Follow us. Listen to the show live. Y'all, we got to get some people into this chat. Still working on the YouTube thing with Spreaker so that um, all you have to do is hop on the YouTube and you can hop in the chat. It used to work. For some reason, I don't know why it doesn't work anymore. But we'll get into that. Maybe they changed some stuff. But thank y'all for tuning in. Till next time. And God bless.